Thank you, Chairperson, sir. Very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I will be uh, speaking on screening and diagnosis of NFLD in routine care. Uh, is it the time? Uh, Dr. Binay has already made my job very easier. He has covered many of the things how uh, NFLD should be diagnosed. Hello. Will you please change the slides? Other person's slides. Yeah. So, as he, as he was mentioning, the prevalence of uh, NFLD has increased over the years. Now, the prevalence is about 25%, as you were saying, and it's more prevalent in uh, type 2 diabetes and in patients with obesity and metabolic syndrome. It's about 70% prevalent in patients with type 2 diabetes and obesity. So, you just can imagine number of people is having NFLD uh, uh, in India itself. If you just think of the uh, population in India and uh, out of them, 25% of the population is having NFLD. So you can just imagine the extent of the problem. And I'm sure in the, like the diabetes India, because with the prevalence of only 10%, uh, we are having the conference, Diabetes India conference. I'm sure in the near future, we'll have NFLD India conference because the problem is so extensive. So today I'm going to discuss about this, uh, uh, how to diagnose NFLD and how to screen NFLD. Because as I mentioned, there's so many people are uh, uh, having NFLD. So you cannot do all kind of screening to all the general population. So what are the methods to do screening? I'll speak about that. Uh, that uh, NFLD that denotes a spectrum of disease from fatty liver to steatohepatitis to the end-stage liver disease, including cirrhosis and hepatocellular failure. So you can see the with the overnutrition, I have just... Uh, Simplify the pathophysiology with the overnutrition in the background of insulin resistance. There is a metabolic dislocation causing uh, cellular stress, and that causes uh, li increases lipotoxicity, causing chronic inflammation, and that leads to hepatic uh, uh, cell inflammation and hepatic cell death. So this is how the the pathogenesis involved. That's all. Most of the times includes also the insulin resistance. That's why the diabetic in obesity the NFLD is so much prevalent. If we see that so many people are having NFLD, how many of them would go into the uh, NAS or end-stage renal disease? So unless we understand that, we keep on doing this, so, many, so much of investigation in all these populations. So about all these patients, these, all these patients, 80% will remain to have steatosis throughout the life. They will not, they will not progress to NAS or end-stage liver disease. Uh, only less than 20% will progress to NAS and about 10% will progress to cirrhosis and out of those cirrhotic patients, 7% would progress to hepatocellular failure. So the, the, now we have to identify the investigation modalities or some scoring modalities to identify who are the people who would progress from NFLD or from steatosis or fatty liver to the or NAS, NAS test, or cirrhotic fibrotic cells. There are multiple risk factors are there. With increasing age, there is increase in the NFLD. And there is, uh, as already have discussed, there are high prevalent in diabetes and metabolic syndrome. It's more commoner in a male population. But however, in female population, the progression of fibrosis is much faster as compared to the male population. And uh, the, uh, the, the like uh, high saturated fat, intake and uh, high fructose fat intake, this all increases the NFLD curve. And some of the genetic uh, association has been found like uh, palatin-like phospholipase domain containing three. So usually this is asymptomatic. So how to diagnose uh, NFLD? NFLD is a diagnosis of exclusion. We have to rule out alcoholic liver disease. We have to rule out hepatitis B and hepatitis C virus infection. We have to rule out other causes of steatosis like Wilson syndrome or hemochromatosis or autoimmune hepatitis. So the, the diagnosis uh, usually is uh, suspected in patients with uh, elevation in the liver trans uh, aminotransferase or some radiological finding of hepatomegaly. So some investigation has been done for some other causes, for pain abdomen, for looking for some malignancy or something, some other reason, the ultrasound resource, the fatty liver, and unexplained hepatomegaly. Clinically, if it is found, then we suspect the case is a patient is having NFLD. A imaging study would help to diagnose NFLD. However, they cannot speak about the severity of the fibrosis, severity of the uh, steatohepatitis. For that, the, the gold standard is the liver biopsy. 
that would that would say the steer to hepatitis that would speak about the fibrosis tasic like this uh, so these are the scoring system which were developed for the uh, for the liver biopsy which would say about the steatosis ballooning and inflammation and you can see that sub uh, the, the sub guideline that's go they have the different scoring system and for fibrosis they have the different scoring system so for fibrosis they have stages from stage 1 or so that is f1 f2 and f3 and f4 the f1 that includes only portal fibrosis and f2 is there is periportal fibrosis the fibrosis are extended beyond the portal region and the stage 3 is bridging fibrosis the so both portal region multiple portal region and pericytial region there is fibrosis and stage 4 is cirrhosis how do we diagnose how do you, what are the imaging modalities how do you diagnose in nfld if you find in the ultrasound um, um, there, there is fatty liver what are the other modalities we can diagnose fatty liver so we have to diagnose if the patient is having steatosis or patient is having steato hepatitis or that is called las or patient is having florid fibrosis or advanced fibrosis for there are multiple imaging modalities are there multiple scoring system are there and both for fibrosis steatosis all the imaging modalities are there so i'll speak about that and can we have some only serum marker which can say about this steato hepatitis uh, recently there has been serum biomarker light like cytokeratin 18 the serum label has been you being used to diagnose whether there is steato hepatitis or nas is there or not so if the cutoff level is more than 250 international unit with the uh, serum cytokeratin 18 fragment then probably a patient is having steato hepatitis so uh, this is being now uh, being uh, commonly used in uh, in foreign countries now coming to scores as we are speaking about in primary care Where, where there may not be ultrasound, there may not be CT scan, there may not be uh, MRI. So how can we diagnose uh, uh, steatohepatitis or fibrosis? So there are multiple scoring systems are available. Like in the upper panel, you can see like FLI, that is fever, uh, that is uh, uh, FLI, SSI, and NFLD, LFS, and steato test. These are the tests. These are the scoring tests used for the look for the steatosis, and Uh, other scoring uh, are used for the fibrosis like fib4 nfs bat bird and fibro test and fibrometer test so so multiple scoring system have been developed They're like uh, fli that is fatty liver index that uses bmi abdominal girth and triglyceride and ggt level uh, this is a formula used for that if the fatty liver index is less than 30 that rules out steatosis if the fatty liver index is more than 60 there's probably a dealing with a case of fatty liver similarly Uh, LFS, NFLD, LFS, that is liver fat score, that uses multiple parameters like fasting insulin level, AST level, and ALT level, and these are a very good validated scoring system. They have been validated with the ultrasound and with the MRI. And NFLD fat score, if it is more than uh, uh, minus 0.640, which that can detect hepatic steatosis with 86% sensitivity, but it cannot differentiate between the different stages of NFLD. now coming to this different scores of fibrosis as we have been discussing the two commonly uh, used uh, scoring systems are uh, fib4 and nfs fib score you can use very uh, this very simple uh, you just have to put the as ast platelet and asgpt level if, if the fib score is less than 1.35 you rule out steatosis if the fib score is more than 2.67 then probably you are dealing with a case of uh, steato hepatitis or fibrosis and nfs score which is which is which is actually validated with the liver biopsy that is a very commonly used and particularly can say that what is the stage of the fibrosis and these parameters like as bmi platelet albumin these are, i mean has been taken in nfld fibrosis score if the score of nfld fibrosis is less than minus 1.45 then absolutely you can rule out the patient doesn't have any fibrosis if the score is more than 0.67 then you can uh, there is positive predictive value of 90% you can say the patient is having advanced fibrosis so and coming to the imaging modalities we can use ultrasound ultrasound only gives the steatosis only the hepatic liver dep deposition it doesn't say about the fibrosis or stages of fibrosis but the ct scan that gives 
idea about the both steatosis and fibrosis. We can use MRI, which gives idea about the both steatosis and fibrosis. And then the last is elastography. Elastography are actually the, uh, the instrument which are prepared to look at the liver stiffness. You can do through the ultrasound by vibration control elastography or to shear wave elastography. Or you can do a MRI that is called MR elastography. So these are the imaging modalities which are available. Now coming to the ultrasound, this is the first and uh, the first test recommended to, to look for the NFLD. And you can see the grade uh, and the histological grade by the liver biopsy. But however, it doesn't speak about the different stages. Ultrasound doesn't speak about the different stages of osteoartosis. So if you look at the, uh, on the right hand side, the radiologist used the, that the, if the, there is hyper ecogenicity in the liver as compared to the kidney, then there is steatosis is present. If the portal venous, these are blood, are diaphragm to all are blood, and liver is more hyper echoic, then this is probably a stage of fourth stage, grade three steatosis. But ultrasound doesn't give actually the stages of stages. It just gives an idea about the, uh, there is steatosis present or absent. So it has a very good sensitivity as long as the steatosis is more than 20%. Ultrasound cannot detect steatosis below 10% or below 15%. So you have to have more than 20% to have the ultrasound sensitivity of 90-95%. Now coming to the transient elastography that was de de developed to quantify the liver stiffness by vibration of low amplitude and low frequency. Uh, the more rigid this tissue, the faster the shear wave progresses. And also this test, uh, this elastography can also detect steatosis, that is fatty liver only, but you need to have a software for that, that is called control attenuation parameter. With that, the cap, the different uh, cutoffs are there to detect steatosis uh, with, the ultras, uh, with the elastography. So these are the cutoff you can see, you can, and you can, uh, into, uh, you can look into different grades of steatosis with this control attenuation parameter. Now coming to the CT scan, CT scan can also detect steatosis and where the liver attenuation is reduced, reduced because of the lipid, lipid overload and the normal Hounsfield unit of liver is 50 to 70, 50 to 57. But when the HU is decreased to less than 40, then probably you are dealing with a case of hepatic steatosis. And magnetic, uh, and MRI is the most accurate method for detection and quantification of hepatic fat content. And if that the two phases, the MRI has been done with the in phase and out phase. In the out phase, the intensity, liver intensity that decreases in patient with hepatic steatosis. And different kind of MRI being used for the more gradation of the, the steatosis, uh, like uh, proton uh, um, MHS, that is MR spectroscopy or PDFF that is proton density fat fraction or hepatic phosphorus 31 MRS. They can detect more accurately, they can stage the, and the different stages of steatosis. And uh, other imaging uh, for fibrosis, we need to have transient elastography that is, that is called fibroscar. You can see the cutoffs or you can do the shear wave elastography that can be done with the ultrasound itself. And you can see the normal cutoff is about 4.5 to 5.5. Uh, the, the, and if the, if, if, the, mm, uh, uh, if the value is more than 7 or 9, then you are probably dealing with a case of mild, moderate fibrosis. If it is more than uh, 15, more than 17, then you are dealing with a case of stage 4 fibrosis. And the, the gold standard imaging method for looking at the fiber fibrosis, magnetic resonance imaging. And there are some advantages of uh, and disadvantages of these methods like uh, in ultrasound, they, these are widely available, these are less costly, but they, these are uh, operator dependent and they doesn't distinguish the steatosis or fibrosis. And, but the transient elastography that distinguishes between the steatosis fibrosis, but not very commonly available. In CT scan, this is operator dependent and radiation exposure is there. In MRI, it's very accurate and very specific for fibrosis but however, it is not widely available and it's costly. Uh, coming to the screening of this patient, and there are, there are lots of confusion about the recommendation of a screening of this patient by the different bodies, because the number of people, the sheer number of people suffering uh, from NFLD is too high. So we cannot screen everyone uh, for, uh, for looking for the NFLD. So American Association of 
लिवर डिजीज दे डू नॉट रिकमेंड स्क्रीनिंग फॉर एन एफ एल डी इन जेनरल पॉपुलेशन नोइंग द प्रिवेलेंस नोइंग द नोइंग द प्रोग्रेसन टू द नॉन अल्कोहलिक्स टीएट हेपेटाइटिस और नोइंग द दिस इज सेकेंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कॉजेस ऑफ लिवर ट्रांसप्लांटेशन आफ्टर द हेपाटाइटिस सी दे डू नॉट रिकमेंड रूटीन स्क्रीनिंग हाई एवर द यूरोपियन सोसाइटी ऑफ स्टडी फॉर लिवर डिजीज एंड पैन स्पेसिफिक एसोसिएशन फॉर लिवर डिजीज दे डू रिकमेंड फॉर uh for renfld screening in particularly those high risk patient with obesity or with type 2 diabetes so there has been uh, some uh, confusion about the screening by the different bodies and this is primarily american association is primarily driven by the cost effectiveness of the screening and there is no treatment available obviously we'll discuss later on about the treatment there is no fda approval treatment available for the uh, treatment of nfld so that is the reason they do not recommend the screening of all the pace general population so this is one of the screening algorithm performed in the primary care so in risk patient those who are patient with diabetes obesity metabolic syndrome or polycystic ovary syndrome you first do a ultrasound or if the even the ultrasound is not uh, available as i mentioned you can use the score of a uh, fatty liver index as i mentioned is the fatty liver index is more than 60 then there is steatosis is present so once you diagnose that that is there is steatosis there is fat in the liver then you have to look for whether the patient has fibrosis or not so for to look to look at the fibrosis you have to look for the fibrosis score that is com too commonly used fibrosis score that is fib4 and uh, another is nfs nfld fibrosis score these two scores you can use and many of the studies have used nfs because this is very well uh, validated with the liver biopsy and you can also if you is uh, if the uh, elastography is available you can use to look for the fibrosis so if the uh, fib score if it is less than 1.3 or the nfs score less than minus 1.45 so there is low risk then there is low risk of fibrosis you do not need to do anything you just screen this patient every 3 year but if you find the uh, the still the enzymes are continuously being elevated in spite of the low fib score or low nfs score then you refer the patient for hepatologist this is the prime reason of screening is to uh, at the right time you need to diagnose this patient for nfld or right time need to diagnose the patient with patient with fibrosis and right time to uh, refer the patient to the hepatologist for the further management as there are studies in us and uk has stored if you do a proper screening you can also reduce the 90% patient referral to the hepatologist and otherwise uh, there are studies to say that if you do not refer the patient in particular time and then in in particular time then the the cases coming directly to the hepatologist they found that almost 25% of these patients are already have advanced fibrosis so the that is the importance of the screening procedure so at the right time you do start doing screening and screening is very easy even if you don't have the ultrasound just do with the putting the few score uh, you can find out the patient is having steatosis or patient is having fibrosis so that that if the if there is high uh, 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 value of a fib4 that is more than 2.67 or uh, nfs is more than 0.6 you can directly you can see the patient is having advanced fibrosis you can refer the patient to hepatologist so that is the reason of doing right screening at the right time and referring patient at the right time and uh, uh, this is a three step approach for this screening so you, you can as i mentioned you can see the general population of almost 20 to 30% people having nfld and out of them about 50% would progress to about 20% would pro progress to uh, uh, to high risk or intermediate group for that you need to test the primary test the u based score based test you can do the score based test will diagnose whether the patient is in the low risk or in the intermediate or high risk once you find out the patient is in the intermediate or high risk with the with that fib score then you could look for the uh, for the for the tell how the degree of fibrosis with the elastography it is possible or you use the scoring method then you thus in this uh, region there are only 3 to 5% of the population have having significant fibrosis then you think of doing the liver biopsy as you know the the liver biopsy is a interventional pro procedure and it's painful and it has its own complications to avoid the liver biopsy this is the method how you to screen 
and, uh, and, and diagnose NFLD. So to conclude, NFLD is a very common condition affecting about 25% of the general population and can cause significant liver disease in proportion of patient. And a liver ultrasound is a pragmatic first-line test to diagnose NFLD. And in patients with confirmed hepatic steatosis, use simple non-invasive measures like FIP4 score or NFS score or transient elastography are available to investigate the liver fibrosis and offer patient with liver fibrosis for the yearly specialist referral because as it, the fibrosis is the strongest predictor of overall liver related mortality in patient with NFLD. Thank you.